okay hello everyone uh, in this video i'm gonna go over the fensky underwood gillen method fensky underwood gillen method is a uh, shortcut it's a shortcut method for sizing distillation columns okay. and fensky underwood gillen consists of three equations slash correlations uh, the first uh, first and foremost we have the fensky equation itself Using the Fensky equation, we'll be able to find the uh, minimum number of stages for a required separation along with comp the distillate compositions. Okay, once you have the minimum number of stages and the compositions in your distillate and bottom, uh, the Underwood equation will be used to find the minimum reflux ratio now minimum number of stages and the minimum reflux ratio once you have those two uh, parameters you can select a reflux ratio and use the Gillen correlation to find theoretical stages theoretical ideal stages for a given reflux ratio. Now keep in mind uh, in order to find in order to like apply the last correlation uh, you need the minimum reflux ratio along with the minimum number of stages. Let's talk about the Fensky equation for a second. Uh, uh, for binary uh, components, McCabe Thiel, or for ternary components, residue curves work. The graphical methods work pretty well. But what if you have like eight hydrocarbons? What if you have like uh, 15 like different components? The good thing about the Fensky Underwood Gillen method is that it's like applicable to like any number of components in your system. So that's the practicality about it. But there are some like heavy, there are some like really key assumptions that go into the derivation of Fensky equation and they should be taken into account as they're going to amount to error in your calculations. So the first assumption is constant molal overflow. Um, from your separations class, uh, you should remember that constant molal overflow, uh, constant molal, molal overflow means that enthalpy of vaporization for a liquid for the liquid mixture mixture is roughly equal to the enthalpy of condensation of the vapor mixture. So the heat evolved by a vapor condensing can be absorbed by the liquid that's boiling on a stage this means that your liquid molar flow rates are roughly equal from stage to stage and the vapor molar flow rates are equal roughly equal from stage to stage The second key assumption is constant relative volatility between your light key and heavy key. So a bit of review from separations. Um, the vap vapor liquid equilibrium for a species defined as between the vapor phase and the liquid phase y being the uh, vapor composition and x being the liquid composition okay so for the relative volatility is defined as the k value the partition for the light key over the partition for the heavy key and now keep in mind that both of these uh, partition co partition coefficients are huge functions of temperature uh, they're also functions of composition 
and like it's like extreme uh, in order to like simplify and get like a nice equation that you can solve by hand you need to like assume a constant relative volatility okay so we have constant molal overflow constant relative volatility all right uh, the last one is gonna be your uh, column is operating at total reflux so if you remember from your separations class uh, total reflux gives you minimum number of stages and minimum reflux is found when you have an infinite number of stages so this is just a review all right now uh, the equation itself I'm just gonna write it in its pure form so the minimum number of stages can be found by taking the logarithm of the flow rate of your light key in the distillate divided by the flow rate of heavy key in the distillate multiplied by the flow rate of heavy key in the bottoms divided by the light key in the bottoms all of this divided by the natural log of relative volatility between light key and heavy key so i'm gonna put an i put a bar on the relative volatility this means that this is a the relative volatility is the geometric mean is the geometric mean of alpha at the uh, temperature of the bottoms and alpha at the temperature of the distillate if you want to be even more precise you can find you can also do it at alpha at the temperature of feed itself so like it's up to you how accurate you want to be so like alpha bar is going to be defined as if you want to be as accurate as possible alpha at the bottom alpha at the feed temperature alpha at the distillate temperature and for the geometric mean you take the cube root okay so the Fenske equation that I have here is defined in terms of flow rates now keep in mind that uh, you have to like either you have to select the desire the desired separation or the client is already going to tell you like uh, the specification of the products based on which you'll have to conduct a material balance to find out like what are you going to what are your flow rates going to be or you can just like go for the compositions so for example another way to write the Fenske equation is the flow rate of the distillate times the mole fraction of light key in distillate divided by the flow rate of distillate divided multiplied by the mole fraction of heavy key in distillate multiplied by bottom's flow rate heavy key composition bottom's flow rate light key composition so by taking advantage of the uh, constant molal overflow you can just get rid of the flow rate and you're left with a uh, so if you have the compositions defined you can use the Fenske equation in this form the composition of the uh, distillate the composition of the bottoms okay so based on the uh, specifications of the based on the specific uh, specifications of the separation that you desire you can uh, 
The compositions can be easily found by performing a simple material balance. And once you've performed the material balance and you know the compositions, uh, this is like a simple plug and chug to find your minimum number of stages. You might need to do some more calculations to find relative volatility. Uh, for our per for sim for the sake of simplicity, we're gonna assume Raoult's law, and for Raoult's law, we're not gonna be worried about activity coefficients, etc. All we need is the uh, PSATs, the saturation pressures. So KLK over K HK K is equal to the saturation pressure of the light key divided by the pressure of column saturation pressure of the heavy key divided by the pressure of column and pressure of column cancels out p sat light key divided by p sat heavy key so by assuming raoult's law you can like make these calculations very fast very simple yeah. Now the only missing piece left are the PSATs. Oops. And for PSATs, we're gonna use our good old Antoine's equation. Or if you have act like if you want to be a bit more precise, you can use. Feel free to use a uh, Peng Robinson or like any you know, any of your favorite equation of states to calculate your saturation pressures. Uh, in the next video, we're gonna do a uh, simple example of like applying the uh, Fensky equation. So stay tuned.